So I'm joined this evening with Dr. Jerry Creech from America, and he's written an amazing book that I've been reading over the last couple of days called Litanies of the Heart, Relieving Post-Traumatic Stress and Calming Anxiety Through Healing of Our Parts. And uh, I didn't understand the title, so I, I watched um, your your one of your talks with Matt Frad, and you explained the book. And it's great that you've come on the channel to bring it this side of the of the Atlantic, um, because a lot of people deal with these uh, these problems that you talk about stress and how we can bring in healing in there. So I was just wondering, how did you come up with the title? Because it seems healing in the parts. Uh, a lot, how, how, can you just bring us into the history of this book and, and your background and and uh, so that we can better understand um, the, the, your thought behind it? Yeah, yeah. So I'm a marriage and family therapist, and I'm a counselor in uh, Atlanta, Georgia, in the U.S. And uh, so I, I specialize in working with uh, uh, trauma survivors and people struggling with anxiety disorders. And and the more I work with people, the more I realize we all have trauma in our lives, and we all struggle with some anxiety in different ways in our lives. Um, and so as I was working with many people and so on, um, I mean, I, I started using a type of therapy um, that got very pop, a little bit popular uh, called internal family systems. And I, I it was trained in a similar approach also called ego state therapy. And it was this idea that we have within our person, within ourselves, our personality was not just one thing that our personality actually represented some kind of multiplicity so one way of saying it is there's different aspects of me or maybe you could say sub personalities um or different we'd say parts so we have a so so in other words like you know a part of me that um is a really good hard worker maybe there's another part of me that just wants to socialize and and, and hang out at the pub or something right so we have this different aspects of ourselves and the more I was doing this therapy, I was amazed at how well it was working with people that when people actually worked with their different parts of their system, whether they're parts that are very good at functioning and managing life versus parts that are exiled or holding wounds or holding some kind of pain or shame or and working with other parts that are kind of self-destructive sometimes that once they were engaged with those parts, that all of a sudden things changed. They were creating an inner system, if you will, that was more harmonious and more loving and more healing. And I couldn't believe it. And, and so I wanted to know how consistent or, or how does this system fit with, with my faith, right? Is it compatible? Is it argue with it? Because it seems so odd. And, and that led me into an exploration as I was writing this book into uh, showing this model and how great it is, but also showing how it is actually not just, I just don't want to baptize internal family systems. I want to actually show how this aspect of multiplicity is inherent in who we are as humans. And in fact, there's evidence in the Bible and there's evidence throughout the history of the church that of this sort of multiplicity, even if it, the language is a little different than modern psychology. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the actual, the litanies of the heart part. So that spoke to me because pr previous to writing the book, I had written a series of prayers and I based them on attachment theory, which I think is just a powerful um you know approach uh, an understanding in psychology of understanding how we attach early on in life and then you know and how it affects us later and so we all develop these insecure attachments styles early in childhood uh, usually and then we play them out later in life and so i had been thinking how do we have insecure attachments with god <laughs> with yes. christ and, and and I was thinking, because I kind of thought it would be great to start there. And what would it be like to actually have a secure attachment with Christ? Because a lot of us know in our heads 
that we're supposed to, or we know yeah. that God loves us and we know we're supposed to love God, but is it in our hearts, you know, like truly? And I think when you dig down sometimes with people, even the most religious, highest, wonderful people, you dig down and you find out, ooh, in my heart of hearts, I think God would banish me or if God knew me, he would, he would dislike me. He would, you know, be disappointed, this kind of thing. And so I thought, well, could we bring those places, those difficult feelings that are in the heart and bring them into the light? And as a litany, we bring them out. We just give them to God. It's like, this is where I'm at. I feel this way. And then the litany is designed to bring you, as you pray the litany, to bring you from a place of insecurity to to inviting God and to having God hold you and eventually trusting in him that he will love yeah. you no matter. So, uh, yeah. so it was a combination of those prayers and then me wanting to like bring that together with this new healing approach. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's the, uh, the, if without the a healed heart, it's very hard to be whole, you know, because people, you know, you see one persona of, person and then you have the hurting side that you don't see that sometimes people don't want to acknowledge and, and it's important to bring to bring that side in, of your life you know into the light so that it can actually be healed mm -hmm. yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. And, I, and i think people don't um realize what's going on in their hearts i think we we spend a lot of time in our heads we, yeah. we spend a lot of time in the logical like side of things and then we're surprised when something triggers us emotionally and we don't know how to handle that. So what we want to do is suppress it or manage it quickly. Mm -hmm. Right. And we don't naturally pause and get curious and want to understand why am I having this reaction now? What, yeah. you know, that, we, and, and but but this whole model is about teaching you how to do that, how to actually connect with those parts. Because when when you have if you had a part that was of yourself that was carrying some deep shame, let's say, yeah, maybe it's from something like from some abuse, sexual abuse, or some other thing. And the natural inclination for most of us is to say, I don't want anything to do with that. Can we please put that out? Like, if we can't destroy it, can we at least put it in a dungeon and lock it up? And the real, which is really when you think about it, pretty unkind, right? Not very loving. And but but it's because it's just overwhelming. Well, and so the whole approach here is how do we invite those parts to be actually closer? How do we get curious about them? We start to realize they're not that scary. And in fact, we have the tools. And when we access from our deepest self, from I would say inmost self, um, it's almost like this beautiful parent. It's the grace of God can work through that spiritual center and, and actually to love the parts of ourselves that we have exiled mm -hmm. and care for them. And all of, and then those lifting their burdens and all of a sudden we discover how beautiful that part is. In fact, how beautiful all of the parts of our system is. It's this beautiful, you know, it's like a little orchestra within and all the different instruments are, are wonderful and interesting and beautiful. And when they all come together, it's like a beautiful yeah. sound. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, in, in, in Ireland, what we, what we face to, and uh, or what we see sometimes is when you don't deal with a part of your life, that's hurting you, you medicate it out. Uh, and it's, and it's, and it's sad to see the different, reactions that especially men have in Ireland uh, towards something that is bothering them, that is causing them pain, uh, be it abuse, sexuality, be it um, uh, low self-esteem, anxiety, depression, something like this. And then all of the medication that, that, that that's put on the layers of, of, of either legal or illegal medications and stuff like this. Um, and, when I, I I think the greatest and I, and I, and this is why I think your book is interesting. I think the greatest tool is actually okay. You you've got something a thorn in your side, a problem, a past that you cannot change, but you don't want to acknowledge. You don't want to sit down and face yourself with it. 
uh, you know, why is that? Um, what's what's so what's so problematic about you looking in there? And it's interesting. I've I've a lot of people have spoken to me about their abuse, and and some people just cannot even face it, can't even go back to it. Whereas others with with Christ have gone back into the abuse and brought Christ in there, stood there, got the healing, and come out of it. And uh, what the healing of memories is what some people have have spoken about. Um, and I, this, this, um, you know, 30 years ago or 40 years ago, this conversation, this type of literature just didn't exist in the church in that, in this way, you know, we see this flourishing of it now, uh, but, but we didn't, we, we, we really didn't have it. Um, mm -hmm. it really didn't exist 40 years ago. Um, and I say this because, um, there was a priest friend of mine, both of us, we entered when we were 18. Uh, two of us i entered seminary but i left i never got ordained and he continued on became a priest and you know in, in his 40s he had a breakdown he was looking at porn he was really in a bad place he had a breakdown and he was able to come through it and he's he's spoken about his 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 uh his problems but um th these these things they these problems exist in the world but unless people sit down lay them out look at the parts that are impacting your life there will be little to no healing in your life without recognition and understanding of oneself what do you think is the how do you think we can bring this further into the church and uh, because i think you'll have an amazing spiritual development if you have this uh, if you deal with these parts that are hurting you at the start right right well a lot's coming up for me as you're saying all that um one thing is I did my doctoral dissertation on male survivors of childhood sexual abuse and healing in relationship. And so I'm passionate about that topic and yeah. whether that abuse happened by clergy or by a relative or, or even a friend or something. Um, I'm, I'm a little passionate about it and I, and especially working with men, mm. um, in a way it's why I made the decision like that, the two first stories, because every every chapter in the book has a little vignette, and they're not too long, but they're meant to just give you a snapshot, kind of little picture to relate to. And the first two are about male survivors of childhood abuse, and um, and I could have gone a different way, and like there are later examples of women and experiencing different kinds of trauma, but but I I don't know, I I felt it was important in in my mind. I thought those stories were powerful. And I thought it was important. And one of the reasons is that um, when I did my dissertation, which was like, I don't know, 15 years ago or something, um, I noticed that people didn't want to talk about it. And mm. I, and I, it was, it's like one of those things that even if you acknowledge like, oh, that's a very bad thing, of course, um, people just kind of almost don't want to know about it. And, and in the United States, there's a big scandal that happened in Pennsylvania with a football team and a beloved coach was, was accused and nobody believed it. Their immediate reaction is we don't believe it. But, and of course it turned out to be quite true. Um, and, and I think that's changing where people, the, but there's this initial desire to, de to deny. And part of it is informs men because men are getting the message one way or another that nobody wants to know about their hurt. Nobody mm -hmm. wants to hear their pain. And, and especially in America with this whole kind of a John Wayne Western kind of approach, like you, you're an individual, you should just figure it out on your own, go out into the desert as an individual and suck it up. And yeah. I don't know how much in Ireland that that's also true. It's the same. Okay. <laughs> and so the idea of a man coming forward to say, I was hurt. I was a victim. It's almost like you don't do that. And, but that's so not what our faith is about. Christ showed us. I mean, he became naked, literally on a cross and killed. It's pretty vulnerable. You don't get a lot more vulnerable than that. And he was to show us that not that suffering is desirable, but that suffering actually is not shame, truly, mm. and suffering can be overcome. Mm. Um, and yet, so I think the message I hoped that my book would share would be that whatever your trauma is, male or female, but I, I hope men hear it, 
that um, there's real healing that can, that can happen. There's real transformation that can happen. And, and of course, you have to do the courageous thing and be vulnerable with a safe person. And when and that is not weakness, that is strength. And if you can do that, um, that'll be life changing. And just that beginning. Oh, absolutely. And, and, and a lot of that can resonate. It uh, resonates with me, you know, um, and people that know me. Uh, I've, I've been saying this for years, you know, humility for a man, uh, vulnerability. Well, it takes humility to be vulnerable. It, 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 it's kind of the fundament on which you can build a lot of things. But if you don't, um, if you're not if you don't take that step it can be very hard and and again a lot of uh, men have reached out to me that have been suicidal uh, looking at these videos and I, and I just encourage anybody if you are listening to this and this conversation resonates with you to please reach out and to uh, and to uh, know that there is support available and that there are many groups around Ireland that are that are here to help you um how long um how how long did it take you to write this book? You were saying that you've collected these different stories. Over what period of time did it take you to collate this and to put the thought together? Um, it, yeah, you might be surprised. It only took me, uh, I would say, a year and a half. Okay. <laughs> and I think that um, once I get passionate about something, even though I, I had a client load of, like I had clients, I had a lot of things I was busy doing, a whole ministry called Souls and Hearts, which is designed uh, as sort of a Catholic resource for people to understand their parts and to uh, grow in human formation. And uh, so I was busy working with that as well. But I, I just, I had it in my heart to write this and uh, it just flowed fairly mm -hmm. well. I thought. And it's, it wasn't hard in the sense that so much of my clinical experience over the last like 20 some years is in here. And like my experience mm -hmm. working with doing EMDR tr uh, treatment for trauma, doing these different kind of parts works, but talking about attachment theory, it all just sort of came together. Um, the stories I sat down and wrote, I mean, uh, they're, they're sort of composite. So um, in general, so I just sat with a few different cases and situations and I just allowed it to flow. I loved it because I haven't done anything that would be considered like a narrative writing in so long. I used to love writing narratively. I used to love poetry and I, I've just been so many years just reading textbooks and psychology books and theology books, which I love all that stuff. But um, to actually just sit down and like, just write, like, as if this is just a little tiny short story, it was so much fun for me. And it's actually opened up, I've started writing more poetry again. So I'm so it opened up a, a part of me that had been exiled, perhaps. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so it, it was something that just flowed. It really it did. What I, the first version uh, was a bit of a mess, because I had a lot of thoughts. And they I just was just, okay, I'm gonna get it down. I'm gonna get it down. And my wife looked at it. And I think she, she's very smart, very bright woman, but I think it gave her a headache. And she's like, I don't understand like your logic and everything. And so what I did was once I imposed structure onto it, I had to get out what I needed to get out. But once I imposed the structure, so it's divided into where there's the vignette, then there's the psychology section, like the psychology of the interior world. Then there's a section on the scripture study, and then there's the exercise, uh, exercise and then discussion. Once I had that structure, it was like, ooh, I could everything went where it belonged and it kind of came together. Yeah. So I realized I need structure to get me or else I'm gonna go into all sorts of directions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and is there any spirituality that would have influenced you in, in writing this book, uh Carmelite or or um other other types of spirituality in church? What what colors uh the the, the your spiritual side in, in guiding you in this book? Mm. What a great question. Uh, I don't think I've been asked that question like that before. I am an odd bird because I think I've experienced everything I can of Catholic spirituality. Uh, I'm, well, I know there's a lot I haven't yet, but 
I, I am, uh, and I've had my own life journey in that, uh, probably very early on, uh, even experiencing the charismatic renewal in the U S mm -hmm. to, um, being, yeah, interested in Carmelite spirituality, being interested in, um, uh, Benedictine spirituality being, I was influenced by Ignatian exercises. So, you know, but then I, I attend a Byzantine Catholic church. <laughs> I've been going, my heart for a long time has been in the e Eastern Christianity. Uh, and so I've, I've, for years I go to, uh, like divine liturgy at a, it would be Ruthenian would be the technically the right Ruthenian Catholic. So, um, I'm drawn to, uh, the patristics. So I'm drawn to the very early church fathers, East and West. I'm drawn to the desert fathers. I'm drawn to the, um, my, my favorite saint now of all time is St. Maximus, the confessor. And, uh, he has simply really blown my mind in my, in multiple different areas. So, um, I am a bit, I like to draw from, from as much as I can that fits in that is sound. My, mm -hmm. I'm working on another book that's more focused on flourishing. This book was on healing. And so I'm actually going to be drawing a little more explicitly from these different tradition, spiritual traditions. Uh, but, um, yeah, I don't know if that answers it. I, I, I'm probably right now, I would say I'm mostly, I've got, uh, that Byzantine Catholic, uh, spirituality is, is dominant. Yeah. I, I, I that <laughs> resonates. It resonates with me. I definitely, uh, well, I'm, 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 I, I love, um, I used to work, uh, with Orthodox back in the day and I've visited Mount Athos a lot and I have a lot of friends in, 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 in the East, both in the Orthodox and the Greek Catholic world. And, um, certainly it's a, it's a beautiful, and I think there's a good church in Atlanta. If you're in, you're, you're in the city, there's actually a beautiful church there, right? Uh, well, the one I go to is called Epiphany of the Lord. It, it's yeah. a, people little Ruthenian in terms of Eastern churches. Uh, well, yeah, there's a number. I'm not sure which one yeah. you might be meeting though. Yeah. I, I've toured them all when I lived in Atlanta for a while. I, I remember touring them all. So that they were, they were very nice. Uh, uh, to the different... Atlanta, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. Well, back and forth for, uh, for work for, um, uh, for a while. Okay. So it's, uh, cool. yeah, that's yeah. right. So, okay. Yeah. So, uh, Bookhead, a nice area. Um, uh, uh, interesting, interesting, uh, interesting city for 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 an Irishman to visit. Anyway, uh, I can imagine uh, Buckhead yeah. Cathedral, uh, and I did yes. counseling every Tuesdays for about ten years out of the out of the cathedral. Yes. In Buckhead. Yes. It's a beautiful area and beautiful uh, adoration chapel, beautiful cross, everything. I mean, it's a. Uh, uh, the, the, there, there's, there is. I mean, there, it's, a, it's a different experience of the faith, uh, especially, and then going to, um, to the Baptist uh, or John uh, Martin Luther, or, or sorry, um, uh, Martin Luther King, the, the, the his. Oh, okay. uh, Right, his yeah. church. Is yes, That's yeah, right. yeah. So it's just to experience, experience, um experience this issue is, is very interesting so it is and and taking the martha into five points and uh, I say, you, you see a different world there than, than than what we're used to over here in ireland so we do yeah so okay. it's, it's very interesting but um um is there any plans for any future books you said you were going to do one on on on, on flourishing after after this one or yeah so i am i'm working on something i really wanted to bring in um bring in Maximus, my new favorite saint, in terms of his understanding of really um, the universe. I mean, he just has this beautiful way of understanding the idea of the um, transfiguration, really, of creation. And mm -hmm. his sort of transcendent view is so powerful. And yet he also um, deeply understands, you know, the internal life. You know, he kind of he kind of compares the, the greater world of Christ transforming this larger kingdom that is being the, that the world is being transformed into as the macrocosm that it ref, reflects also an inner kingdom. Mm -hmm. And once he made that connection for me, it just, it kind of opened up something for me. And even for this current litanies of the heart in terms of seeing like when my, all of my internal parts are in harmony, 
and when in connection with my innermost self and I, I've relieved burdens and, you know, all of my parts are in a sense evangelized and they're all praising God together. And then, so there's like an inner temple or inner kingdom that is just on fire for God. And when that is joined with others who come to the literal physical church, where if that was true and everyone was in that place, we would be like on multiple levels transforming in the, 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 the world, if you will. And that's the yeah. kingdom both within and the kingdom that is around us. And it just his vision is so beautiful and so transformative. And he's an interesting one also because he bridges East and West. He, he, he grew up in Constantinople, but he wound up in Rome for a long time. And, and, and of course he was, he was, he, he was a confessor because he confessed the faith against heresy and unfortunately had his, he was mutilated for his efforts. Mm -hmm. And but he always had humility through, even through all of that. Which led me really to think about like what does it mean like to have that internal peace i imagine the martyrs like saints and martyrs who are willing to die in horrible ways sometimes right physically mm. but i think it's because internally they were in perfect harmony yeah like you can't do anything to to me to would actually take away this internal truth this internal peace even if you did horrible things to me, you know, God forbid. But, and I think Christ says that, you know, better for um, uh, you to chop off your hand, less lose your body and soul into the pit. Well, I think he's he's kind of getting at it. It's like, yeah, nobody wants their hands chopped off, but, but it would be better to lose that than to lose this inner kingdom. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's it's so it's so critical. Like uh, once once you're united as a as a man, you know you're at peace. Uh, you know there's there's nothing in there that's disturbing you. You can you know uh, you can actually descend from your. So many people are praying up here and said, "Well, come on, come in, come in down here and pray down here. This is where we pray." You know, like the 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 hesychast, uh, If you ever if you ever been taught by the by the monks, you know, to pray the the hes real hesychas prayer uh, you know it's 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 a very peaceful uh profound experience of uh you know of 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 uh of encountering christ you know um it's a uh, it's a prayer I, I tattooed on my arm and people ask well what does it mean Jesu Christi and you know um uh, fascinating people hadn't a clue about you know this this beautiful um beautiful yeah. beautiful prayer that draws you in and uh and you can uh, and if you're actually if you're talking about saint maximus you have the if you read the philokalia uh you know the the, the monks that all are well the fathers they all talk about you know, knowing yourself you know knowing how to place all of the different challenges that you're experiencing knowing them and where to put them and how to systemize your life because if you're not in order you know if you're in disorder or or in if your life is in disorder or there's a part of you it's kind of holding you back mm -hmm. and and the whole the whole uh, spiritual life is that um you know uh, that that purific purification of the purifying moment you know that that uh, of of systemizing life you won't get onto the contemplative unit of unless you start with that purification and so many people aren't aware of this and I, and I think literature the book that you're doing with so many other works now are really a purification in the church to, to kind of okay you have a problem you know everybody has problems you know welcome to the welcome to the fallen world you know your problem well this is how you work on it and I think it's a great gym it's a great it's a great exercise of 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 forming ourselves now in the church by you by uh, by all of this literature that seems to be coming up i don't yeah. know if uh, if would the, how much feedback you've gotten on that in the states on it or but i thought i thought the book was so well presented it was it was great well thank you yeah no it, it seems to be doing well i one thing that i wanted that i thought was really important and i will have an audible version hopefully soon to mm. help support this but is the exercises too because i think that I, I'm hoping that the the st little vignettes or stories will kind of capture your heart a little bit, right? Kind of capture yeah. the story, and then the for those that are interested in the psychology, they'll they'll be they're intellectually going to be 
might find that part really interesting intellectually. And then the, the Bible study part is going to be hopefully spiritually kind of interesting. So different parts are going to like different things. But the, um, the exercises are designed to actually show you how to do this. Because it's one thing to, to say, oh, yeah, look inside and have this kingdom within and be, create harmony in your system. But, but people don't know how to do that. It sounds lovely, but how do you do that? <laughs> exactly. So I, I literally walk you through how to do that. Like the exercises are designed to like, I, how do you look inside? What do you have to do um, to, to uh, uh, connect with a part? Just even yeah. one, I think the early ones is like just a part. You know, I think the beginning, I'm more getting you used to like, you know, just a calm place and, and just a little bit, but, but as it goes, like identifying a protector part, identifying, eventually identifying a, an exile and unburdening even a little bit of explanation of how do you unburden a part, you know, so they feel more freedom. And at any point, if, if it was difficult, like, you know, cause this is sort of a self help book, right? Mm. It's a do it on your own. But, um, you know, a, a therapist who knows this model could help if, if you're, yeah. if anybody is stuck, right? And then of course, Souls and Hearts is a ministry we have that also provides support in helping people to understand their parts and all that. So, but, but I, I think a lot of people hopefully will be able to do this and, and immediately um, learn how to do it, at least some basics yeah. and how to do it. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. No, it's great. And uh, um, I, I'll definitely share it around with uh, some groups in, uh, around Ireland to see if they're interested. And we, we'll, we'll try to get it into a uh, knock bookstore, which is uh, not too far from me so that people will be able to buy it. But it's good to to see doctors and from the faith side and the, and the science side bringing it together because um, somebody that's sad you know, they go to the doctor and what's the doctor going to do? Oh, I'll give you medication. And I said, I mean, a doctor said to me once, you know, there's no medication that's going to cure sadness or depression. I mean, it's it's kind of like it'll lift you up a little bit. It'll it'll get you out of a, of a, of a, of a momentary situation. But that person needs somebody to talk to. It didn't, they need somebody to actually draw out what's impacting them because the medication is just like co- cocoons it or covers it up for a while it like encases it in wax and leaves it there and you're carrying it around the medication but nobody's dealing with it you're not talking you're not you're not actually exercising it out medication can be really more symptom management at best and yeah. what this is is hopefully going beyond symptom management this is actually working with the parts of the self that are wounded, that are carrying the shame, that are carrying the pain or the grief, and, and how do you connect with those parts and burden them so they become alive, so they come back and they no longer exiles. We bring them into the system and it's health in a healthy way. And, and I believe, you know, barring a, there's some conditions that are very medically based, mm. um, certain kinds of schizophrenia, or whatnot but uh, certain psychoses that would require medication probably no matter what. But yeah. um, even those cases benefit from going, looking deeper deeper, and, and, and working and loving and healing our parts. So, yeah, yeah. it was great. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to come on and to, uh, um, to talk about your book and I will be putting links to to the book uh in this uh, video it's published by by uh, uh, Sophia, Sophia Press is it Sophia Institute Press that's right yeah yes. so you and uh, yeah and and it's on Amazon as well so uh, you'll be able to get it I also saw it available actually in in some UK uh, publishing house so uh, it is available in Europe uh, so that we can be able to buy it and that's really exciting i i can't wait someday when i come to ireland i would be absolutely flabbergasted to see my book in a store somewhere <laughs> well i i think you i think if you came to ireland you will you would get an audience here of people that will be actually interested because you're marrying two sides you're marrying the faith and you're marrying the counseling the 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 science you know and they're not contradictory they're not Oh, your faith side can't inform this. I, I, I do think, I do think faith is a very power. It's a very powerful 
I mean, it's a very powerful light into our life. And so I'd love to I'd love to see you someday give a talk in Ireland. And I think you would uh, you would be surprised the amount of people that are that would come looking for healing in that in that area um, and, and to hear from to your talk. experience. We'll have to talk yeah. and plan something. <laughs> yes, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. And uh, if uh, if anybody has any comments, leave them in, leave them below. And uh, please buy the book and uh, share this video around. Um, and I think it's a it's a great time in the church. To, we see all of this wealth uh, of of, um, of of spirituality and uh, uh, coming out. And uh, definitely, will be, I'll be reading up in Saint Maximus the Confessor a little bit after this, just to inform myself. And uh, I'm not as I'm not as um, read up on him as you do, but I, 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 I'm intrigued now to know a bit more about him. Awesome. Wonderful. Okay. God bless you. Oh, you too. Thank you for having me. Thank you.